And I just want to take a second to open one document, um, which is a list. Um, it's actually a list of all the people I ever had sex with. Hold on. Let me open mine. G'day and welcome back to the Eloquent in the Room podcast. I'm Rose Cooper. And I suppose about a decade ago, I was a cougar. I say I suppose because I didn't call myself that. Never at any stage did I bask in this weird handle that seemed way too aggressive and predatory to me and I just didn't like anything. I didn't like MILF either and I found it really weird that people would call women MILF kind of forgetting that it was an initialism or an acronym. I remember I was in a play and there was a couple of 15-year-old girls in it playing my daughter and someone else's daughter in this play and they were joking around and called me a MILF and I thought this is just too fucking weird for words that these patriarchal kind of misogynist terms entered the vernacular and become part of pop culture and it's entirely and utterly around a woman's fuckability based on her age or her fertility or whatever. It's yeah, highly subjective, whereas, you know, men don't get the same thing. They're just, just purely and utterly complimentary like Silver Fox or something. I think Dilf might be kind of resting in the background of this pop culture phenomenon, but not, not that anyone <laughs> uses it to that degree, I don't think. But it's pretty fucked up. Having said that, Patsy Minuti Hello, Cougar. slid into my DMs a couple of months ago, said that she enjoyed the podcast and my Instagram output and wondered if I'd be interested in having a chat with her on the podcast about being Cougars, knowing full well that earlier in my podcast I had mentioned that the age range of the people that I had known in the biblical sense I had lain with, I had made the beast with two backs with, I had made love with, you know, all the cute terms while we're talking about pop culture references. I made no bones about it, made no boners about it, (laughs) Um, because it's not something that I look back on with particular pride or shame. It's just, it it just is what it is. When I was in my mid-30s, most of the guys I had sex with were at least five years younger than me. Some older, some around the same age, but most were at least five, 10, 15 years younger than me when I was 35. And then I met my second partner and we split up when I was 52, 53. And I found myself out in the dating world again with really no clue what my stocks were, whether or not anybody would be champing it a bit to jump my bones Um, But it turns out that in that 15-year, 16-year hiatus that internet porn had been doing an amazing PR job for me as an older woman because of this phenomenon known as cougar porn. And I haven't looked at much of it. I, out of curiosity, have had a glance at it. I don't like porn. I don't watch it. It just doesn't, not only doesn't do it for me, it leaves me cold and in some cases just disgusts me, bores me to tears. I'm just, I'm talking about your common garden variety porn hub kind of porn. If people want to steer me towards ethical, really good porn, feel free to slip into my DMs, send me an email to recommend something that you think I might enjoy based on what I'm telling you now. I enjoy reading erotica. And that's only if my libido or my imagination fails me. And I think I'm due for a wank. It's been a couple of weeks. Uh, Regular masturbation is very good for my mental health, sexual health, particularly as an older woman. I do look at it in this way. It's not an automatic go-to thing that I do because I'm horny all the time because I'm just not as horny as I used to be when I was having a lot of casual sex or when I was having a lot of marital sex. There's been this natural dropping off, as it were. But suffice it to say, it changed the landscape that I'm aware of. It's probable that 
young men have always enjoyed fantasizing about older women since Adam was a cadet, as my mum used to say. But as a mainstream idea, um, I don't know if it uh, has always been a thing. I just know it's one of the most popular searches out there in regards to porn world and I know that some of the leading uh, anti-porn advocates out there that are not necessarily just picketing porn as a bad thing, but they're offering alternative good porn like Make Love, Not Porn, headed up by Cindy Gallup, who did a TED Talk about 10 years ago or so, talking about how... Um, awful it was to have sex with young men who had been influenced by watching porn and because they would interrupt the sex to ask can I come on your face no one ever asked me that I gotta say but they did ask me other questions which were clearly porn based and when you're over 50 you just you couldn't be fucked literally you just could not be fucked <laughs> entertaining some of these scenarios just for the amusement of someone who is looking at you like you are sex Disneyland and a tick off the old bucket list and all that sort of jazz and it's tedious. Uh, we cover a lot of ground in this conversation so I'm not going to preempt too much of my life as a cougar and I mean cougar in, in inverted commas I don't really call myself a cougar I hope I've established that. But I guess I knew I was always going to talk about it or address it at some stage, if only to dispel myths around it, if only to be open and vulnerable about the fact that, yes, while I had a lot of sex with a lot of younger men and men my age and older men, um, that that did not mean I was impervious to the intellectual charms of these human beings and that I didn't develop crushes and didn't have my emotions trampled on from time to time or didn't have confusing feelings around what was intended to be something casual and fun and frivolous and stuff. For the most part, my adventures between the ages of 53 and 57, let's say, for the most part were fun, frivolous good, clean, fun between consenting adults. And I had a very strict kind of screening method where I wanted to ascertain whether this person was going into the thing with the right intentions. And I have actually talked people out of it based on me thinking um, for someone with no experience to have an experience with someone of my experience might shape their sexuality in a way that just didn't seem to me was appropriate. I just felt like they should be having their experimentation with people their own age. But then you get worldly people or particularly switched on spiritually young people and it's a different interaction entirely. You feel like you're on a very level playing field in regards to people going into something, wanting to have a very respectful, fun, mutually enjoyable, shared experience. I know, right? You wouldn't think so. <laughs> the press, the porn, uh, you wouldn't think that the opportunity would be there for someone in their early 50s and someone in their 20s to have meaningful spiritual connecting experiences but hand on my heart I did experience things along those lines. So having got that bit off my chest let's dive into the interview. It is going to be broken up into at least two parts. I haven't gotten around to editing the next part that I'm putting out yet. I've just got this particular part edited and ready to go. I know that you're listening Patsy and I just want to thank you again for having this amazing conversation with me, for allowing yourself to be raw and vulnerable and honest and candid. I'm privileged to have had this conversation with you and thankful that you weren't offended when <laughs> we were first chatting and I was like, oh, no, please don't talk about cougar. I can't stand that word. You know, I was a little bit 
but I owned it and the more we spoke, the more I realised that her deal was a whole other deal entirely. I do invite you to check her out on Instagram, TikTok and her website. I will be putting all the links in the show notes. And stick around to the end because I'll probably have something cute to say. I always do. I just want to have it in the corner of my eye just in case I need a story that I can just look at that as a a visual aid. I love it. I absolutely love it. I'm just going to, you know, just so that we're in the same like space, I'm just going to bring mine up here too. This is just my, my younger guy list. This isn't yeah. like of all time. I, I need to go in and like do the all time list. Yeah. Would you, how would you go with that with remembering if it was an all time um, list? I, you know, it would kind of be a rolling thing. I think that I would kind of remember like the big ones. And then like over time, if I set my mind's intention that I would remember the rest that they'd, they'd eventually filter in. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful Patsy Minuti. How are you? <laughs> Beautiful Rose Cooper. I am wonderful. And really, it is such an honor to connect with you. Really. Oh, go on. No, I mean, I, it. Oh, go I, on, go I on. will go on. <laughs> I just, I, um, I love learning from women. Mm. You know, and your path, um, it's, it's like, I almost, from following you and listening to some of your stuff, I kind of feel like I am where you were maybe, you know, when you were this age in terms of like your evolution and where you were thinking about things. And I just love the wisdom of women as, um, you know, as they learn and as they assimilate and as they grow and how they can share it with younger women like myself. Hmm. It's the thing is like hindsight's always twenty twenty, and everyone has their own emotional experience and their own emotional purge or whatever that they're doing at different times when they're single. Sometimes you're just consciously single and not really wounded or hurt or, or whatever and wanting the attention of, of having lots of sex partners. And sometimes you're just oblivious to the fact that this is actually what you're feeling. And then you have all these sex partners and you find that you're getting irrationally attached to certain people who are toxic or or whatever. And you go, actually, I need to step back and process my stuff. I didn't know any of that. I was just too busy patting myself on the back at one stage because younger men thought I was hot. So and that that was all like that was tunnel vision about that shit, and that was when I was like twenty years younger than I am now. Yeah, that's when I was thinking oh, I'm I'm getting old and past it. And <laughs> <laughs> I mean, here's the thing, you know, and I I think that I recognize too that this very well could be a phase. Yeah, and I'm just in it right now. I feel like I'm pretty aware of of things or how fulfilling or not fulfilling certain situations are and and toxicity and stuff. But it feels like it's just this capsule in time. I'm this is where I am right now. The thing I enjoy about us connecting and also me watching your videos and that that you're doing on TikTok and stuff. I can appreciate the uh, creativity 100% and the thought that goes into it and the analogies that you're superimposing on your TikToks and stuff, which is a gift because you're making them super uh, digestible for people who have that short one-minute attention span and you're capturing their attention. You're making them laugh, but there's a lot of truth bombs in what you're saying. Um, So I love that. I love that to pieces. I'm always wrestling with my own stuff, my own conscience, inner inner demons, my opening up to learning more about the patriarchy than I thought I knew and looking back on how I pandered back in my early days as a journalist. I'm like when I first started as a journalist, I was pandering so much to the sex advice I'm giving and the stuff that I'm saying is about how to keep a relationship together and how to keep sex vital and and interesting, but kind of ignoring that relationships are a lot more than that mm-hmm. because, because I was in a relationship that was all about sex and keeping that man happy. And we had a lot of good years together as well, but I didn't know who I was at the end of it. So there was a lot of good stuff, but a lot of it was me being a very young, impressionable girl when we got together and just wanting to, him to be happy, like really wanting to, him to be happy. And if he was happy, he's not going to leave. And in, the, and in the end, I left. So we split up when I was 35. Okay, I was just going to ask your age. Yeah. 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 So we met when I was 18 and we split up when I was 35. Wow. And this... The internet was happening, but it predated um, smartphones and apps. Online dating was starting. RSVP was kind of about to start up. These things were starting to happen. And 
the only people out there were younger men, really. There wasn't a lot of guys my age, 35 or whatever, they're at home being married. Right. Not, not out at pubs on a Friday and Saturday night at that time. Who knows what's going on out there in the world now? <laughs> but When you say younger men, when you were 35, what was the younger man to you well, at that the, age? Well, the very first person I slept with after the marriage broke up was 27. And at, okay. that, and at that time... I thought, wow, this is a big age gap. And not only that, I lived in a small town and I knew him, so everyone in a small town knew each other. It was just the first time I was out there and I wanted it to be with someone I trusted and knew, so it seemed like a good idea. Like I was sort of consciously going into it as thinking, well, not only am I with someone I know and like, he's just got out of a very long-term relationship, so the sex is probably going to be really good. Because that was that I always think that, and I still think that if someone's been in a long relationship, they're more inclined to have a clue. Yeah. Yeah. So that was an instinct at that time. But then when I started going out and I'd partner up with friends of mine, we'd go out with the purpose of going out, mingling, having fun, dancing, either with a mind to not picking up or to pick up. It was either or whatever steam I felt I needed to let off at that time. And the age gaps got longer, but my my ability to determine, because I was 35, so my ability to determine how old someone was in comparison to me, it wasn't that easy, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you, if a guy has a beard, he looks older than a guy who doesn't have a beard. Yes, when, yes, when, <laughs> this is true. Yeah, <laughs> when you talk about the difference between, say, 20 and 30, or, or between 25 and 35, you know, there's like, eh, such a vast difference I was always uh I was still locked into the paradigm of being validated for the way I looked because I was so in invested in that but I just remember sleeping with one person that I picked up at a club and the entire time we were together he kept making comments about my physical appearance like in the middle of stuff He'd say, mad body, like just constantly excited by the fact that I was a fit person. And I thought, why are we having this conversation while we're having sex? I just, and that, that's when I started, certain things started to twig to me that I was being looked at and not being seen. And it started, mm-hmm. it started sort of, uh, uh. so yeah, I got, uh, I got less inclined to um, race out and pick up. Mm-hmm. Mm. But it's me. I don't want to talk about me. I want to talk about you. <laughs> no, I just, uh, I, I mean, I very much understand that. I, mm-hmm. um, I'm definitely not there in terms of yet in my life. Of, you know, I'm, I'm still very attached to, you know, my level of fitness or how I'm presenting to the world physically. I'm yeah. very attached to that. Yeah. Uh, I don't necessarily like that. And, you know, the, with the aging process, I'm going to have to come to terms with that at some point, Mm. you know, I'm going to have to come to terms with that. Mm. And uh, sometimes I beat myself up for not being there. And just um, because, I mean, even on my dating profiles, you know, I will put a picture of myself in a bikini Mm. on my dating profiles, you Mm. know, and here's where I feel Rose, like the worst feminist in the world Mm. and where I really do judge myself a Mm. lot, Um, you know, because I'm putting myself out there for the male gaze, you Mm. know, as a woman, you know, I, I, I grew up or I've been socialized to know how to attract that. And I still find validation from that. I'm mm. not there yet. You know, I, I, I can see that. Mm. Um, I'm also aware of it. I don't know that that excuses it. Well, I think you can absolutely forgive yourself if you look at it less as you're putting it out there as the male gaze and think of it more like you're hiding behind it. Because okay, so say you, because, it a different way. That's interesting. Uh, all right. So if I've learned anything about myself being single and going out and having a lot of one-night stands in my 30s and then finding myself being single um, at 52 and, and starting to date at like 53 and there was a period between like 53 and 57 where I was quite motivated but when I say motivated, like I was on apps and all this sort of stuff, I was still putting people through a, a very strict screening process that was about what I wanted, 
not about what I could do for people, but what I wanted from it. And I would give people the benefit of the doubt because they were younger and stuff. And I'd indulge myself in having these conversations because I thought in having conversations, I was giving people the opportunity to see me as more than just this bucket list item that they wanted to tick off as I've been with someone who's old enough to be my mother or grandmother in some fucking instances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I was in my relationship in that, in that marriage where I was diminishing myself and my personality while in the process of enhancing my appearance and getting really, really good at sex and becoming really super orgasmic and doing everything to make my partner feel like the best lover in the world and and the most loved human being in the world and all that. But I lost myself, completely lost myself. And uh, I often thought if I was ever to get hit by a car and be rendered paralysed, I I wasn't 100% sure that he'd stay. I really, I really doubted his genuine love for me. Casual sex aside, the second partnership that I had, which was also a long one, it was interesting because he was the total opposite and he shone like a beacon in that because he was total opposite. He saw me more as a woman, as a mother, as a sister, as a friend. He saw my heart qualities. He saw these things. And it made me squirmy and uncomfortable to begin with. I didn't know what to do with it. I was like, no, no, don't you want to see me in lingerie? You know, like I dressed up, one of those second, you know, first or second dates we had, I dressed up in lingerie. And he said to me, you don't have to serve yourself up on a plate. You know? Wow. Yeah. And I was 35, he was 24. And I conflated that with this person is a really special person not that I was also special right but he was special because he saw me a certain way right having said that my theme for these interviews that I'm doing at the moment is the Madonna Hall complex and there was a little bit of both of that happening in both of those situations um Whereas I, I, I guess I felt I wanted to keep my part, first partner faithful to me by being everything he could ever want in a woman, be all women, be the mother of his children, be a kind person, but also be like a mad sex person as well. Mad's a bad adjective. But in my second relationship, I, I saw myself being seen and I had to fight a little bit harder to be seen as the sexual fixin I also wanted to be like because that was what I knew that was how I understand that's how I understood validation more that's why I'm saying to you hiding hide you're hiding behind your obvious physical attributes and also feeling like it's your responsibility to maintain this physique because you feel at this point in your life how old are you now uh 50 right so there's 10 years between us I'm 60 in a few weeks that if if they're not wanting to have sex with you because you look Sorry. young because you look younger and because you're fit why else would they want to have sex with you whereas i think if i went on an app now someone would still want to have sex with me if i was on an app for casual sex if that's what i was about and i could probably still choose someone to have sex with based on certain shared value systems as well it wouldn't I, st- I still don't think it, it'd be really difficult for me to find someone to have sex with if that's all I wanted because I'm a woman first and foremost because there are people out there who want to have sex with people who want to have sex I believe there are men out there who don't want to coerce women into sex they actually want healthy sexually yeah active people and you would encounter this in your life regardless of the age of the people that you're with the secret to good sex is enjoying it the secret to being good in bed is enjoying it genuinely enjoying it being present being communicative being open being shameless all of these things it's not about whether or not you're good at giving a blowjob or good at one particular thing or or whatever it's just being all about sex for the however long you're together with that person you're both all about sex then it's a no-brainer it's not something you have to think hard about would you agree I love that that. I love that actually 
in my life, I've been so stilted sexually because of my upbringing, you know, just growing up in a very conservative religious home. Mm. It just like sexuality, like you just didn't go there. Like it's it was ironic. just so much shame about it. Even for me to even have my first sexual experience, I had loads and loads of therapy. Mm. And I still feel like I'm still just grappling with all that and working through that. And, and, mm. and, 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 you know, and it's not just like the repressive Christian upbringing, you know, then you layer in patriarchy, you know, then you layer in like heteronormative, you know, norms and, and, and cultural things. And it, it just is a purity culture. And it just, my head swims in this sometimes. Mm. Yeah. It's, there's a lot to be said for not overthinking things, but at the same time, you do have to check in with yourself periodically. Like, yeah, oh, there's so many layers of shame that women have to overcome. And I know that when I was younger, when I was uh, before I got married the first time, I was a young teenager and I wanted love and I was sleeping with a lot of people hoping that it was the start of a relationship pretty much each time. I, it would still happen the first night or whatever because I, my first boyfriend was a year-long relationship and we had nice sex together. So I had an urge to have sex. It was like... I want you to like me. I like you, so that makes me want to have sex with you. Like, it's not like I was this clueless person who didn't enjoy sex and was being coerced all the time. But my choices for people to allow myself to have sex with people, like really bad choices I was making because I was young and I had a, a rejection sensitivity and a low self-esteem. I was a mm-hmm. skinny, skinny teenager. I was picked on, I was bullied and whatever. And then my body developed late. When it developed, I had a, like, you know, the body that people wanted to have sex with. And I thought that was good. <laughs> I thought people want to have sex with me because I have a nice body now. I was apologetic about the fact that I was skinny and flat chested before. And I felt like, well, now I've got something to offer you. I have breasts now. This, this was the patriarchy that was like prescribing for me what made me more attractive as a human being. And I don't know about you, but do you ever look at your photos of yourself as a teenager and just have so much love and empathy for who you were then? Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. just and just think you were so beautiful. You might have been naive and whatever, but basically we're still the same person we always were. If you, yeah. have, a, if you have a good heart, you had a good heart then. You just yeah. didn't know. You just didn't know. There's so much you just didn't know. And I uh, still don't. Mm, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I'm projecting myself to my 70-year-old self or my 75-year-old self and still holding compassion for me now right where I am, yeah. right here, you know? Yeah. This morality around the double standard in regards to older women and younger men as opposed yes. to younger women and so I, yes. I still I still feel like there's something to be said for fuck you everyone who wants to judge me if at some stage I had sex with people that were old enough to be my children or the same age as my children because they were adults and I didn't go after them. I never pursued anybody. They pursued I- me. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I'm the same way. People who tell who will call me a groomer, right? Mm, mm. And I'm like, I, you know, I get on a dating app and I match with someone. Like, yeah. I, I, and yeah. a lot. Of, if it's a one night stand, I think grooming implies like I'm like, you know, manipulating over a course of a period of time. Like, I get like three hours, two, four hours, three hours, two hours. Like, I mean, how I, is that? Yeah. And having a conversation, yeah. I'm sure with you having a conversation, you're sizing up if that person knows what they're doing, if they're really young, I would size up if that person really knew what he was doing before. I just, you know what? I have to, it's, it's. I talk them out of it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even so much. It doesn't necessarily bother me if they know what they're doing or not. Mm. I, I think in those initial conversations when I'm having, you know, when I'm sussing someone out, I need to know that, um, that there's that I feel safe enough with that person that there's some level of comfort that there's at least some level of some um, well let me see I would say comfort and do I feel safe um, you know and and is there some kind of 
connection there. You know, and some guys I meet and I, I just, it's just like, no, I'm, I'm not feeling it. Yeah. Um, and then I don't go forward with it, but you know, I'm always hopeful that, that once things go in the bedroom, that at least there's an added attitude or receptivity to learning, you know, mm. and, I, and that's not always the case. Mm. And it's not the most, I mean, sometimes I get surprised and it's fun sex or what's actually, it's always fun because yeah. I, I, it, it's just sex is fun for me. Yeah. Is it like always the most amazing sex? No, mm. it's not. I, I do find a lot of younger men, at least the ones that I, okay, I have to qualify this by saying, you know, the ones I meet on Tinder and, yeah. and, uh, that I will go out with and you'll probably relate to this. Maybe you'll relate to this, but a lot of times it's just like, um, they just think it's the older woman and she's going to take over and, and bring them pleasure, mm-hmm. you know? And it's just like lay back and like, you know, yeah. lady pull out your Swiss army knife and just have at mm-hmm. it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I think that's one of the most frustrating parts I think of dating younger men, but you know what? That can also happen with guys my age, you it- know? To the way I remember it, more often than not, it was dudes over forty rather than under forty who I I clashed with in that way. Like it seemed like chemistry, and then I just found that they had their ideas about what was going to happen, and yeah, yeah. Um, so that was part of the lack of attraction for men my own age or men over forty, um, because. I felt that I I would always establish with the with the contact on the app. I'd establish who I was. Um, they I'd have I had photos that featured me with makeup on, without makeup on, full length impression of my, the fact that I'm tall and slender, but no sort of bikini shots or anything. Yeah, just uh, and uh, like a travel photo, or just to show, sort of show that I was you know adventurous or whatever I don't know had a brain and that that if people were interested to have a conversation because most people aren't and that's that's why I stopped doing I just had no bandwidth for it anymore having these having these inane conversations that you you have to weed through in order to have an actual conversation that I'd say um they would like ask for nudes or shit like that and I'd go I'd just say I'm 53. I have the body of a 53-year-old. And that's that's all I would say, you know, just sort of like, I don't know what you think you're getting or whatever. Steal yourself if you have to. I'm 53. Or get excited if that's what you're into. I'm 53. I don't know. But, but I would always throw back at them that what I look like naked seriously should have nothing to do with the equation of us having sex because I'm over 50 and I've had three children. You want to judge my appearance and get excited about whether or not you want to have sex with me based on my appearance? Fuck you. I don't care. You know, like, move along. Go look for someone else. So, And I can't imagine myself thinking that at 35. Yeah, but not there yet. I was like, you get what you get, mate. This is This is how I present. I've seen a lot of naked people. That doesn't get me excited anymore. The novelty of all the things that are supposedly naughty, forbidden, taboo. The only thing that excites me sexually is whether or not you are a person that I'm attra- like really attracted to. Then this starts up. But just because you're good looking, just because you're built a certain way, just because there's just because that, there has when to be a connection. For you? Except when I was going out and picking up in pubs, I was very mercenary, tunnel vision. It's been two weeks since I've had sex. I'm looking for someone to have sex with. That that was my modus operandi. I don't know if oh, I was, yeah. yeah, I don't know if I was consciously thinking about, about that, but I had this libido that wanted what it wanted, and um, I was, you know, and I felt completely and utterly shame free about that. I equated it with I was more masculine <laughs> in those times or the the traditional role or patriarchal notion of being more motivated to have sex because of a, more of a male reason than a female reason that's we're talking about 1995 96 when I was thinking these things and the shift I think it boiled down to that time and when I returned to wanting to have sex 
in my 50s and looking for people to have sex with, I still wanted to have um, the ability to be myself and to open up myself sexually in a way that fulfilled me in the experience because I had this not only libido but this desire for the catharsis of full body orgasm and and like the the deluxe treatment not the not the quickie not the show and tell not the performative in any way I wanted that person to help me facilitate this experience because I had become spoiled by having these cathartic amazing full body orgasms in full connection with my previous relationship and I was kind of addicted to that sensation as well Mm. Mm. and that's what I confer in these conversations that's what I know these conversations I'm into this full body experience and every single person that wanted to have sex with me or wanted to meet me would say yes put me down for that I'm into that put me down for that we'd have coffee we'd go for a walk or whatever I'd or we'd have dinner and I'd, I'd ascertain whether or not I'd want to kiss them and then mm-hmm. after and then after kissing someone then I'd ascertain whether or not mm-hmm. I actually wanted to either see them again to have sex or have sex with them then and there so those were the options right. or or I need to think about it so let me yeah, go away and think I, about I, it. I, I relate to that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know about you, but do you 100% know that everybody that wants to meet you wants to have sex with you? Um, do you ever feel like you're being sized up or do you feel like they already know, you know, like it's more the decision that you make than they make? I would say it's probably more the decision I make. Although I've mm. had a couple of guys just kind of, uh, I, I think it was probably nerves, like kind of get up in the middle and just, you know, we're making out and they just kind of get like deer in the headlights and, you know, get up and go. I've had a few of those um, situations. But mm. yeah, I would say most of the time, if I actually get to a date, I would say that it's really more up to me and whether I'm going to choose to move forward or not. Yeah, in my case, it was 100% of the time. It was really annoying because the date would be laden with this feeling of expectation that they were just waiting for me to quit the small talk and say the word. Mind you, I wasn't always confident when I first dived back into the dating scene. I was not sure if anybody would want to go out with someone my age, but uh, yeah, I found out pretty quickly. The very first guy I slept with the second time around was 27 very good looking Indian guy and he just blew smoke up my skirt told me I was you know really beautiful and I've always wanted to date an old woman and I'd be like and why is that why do you want to uh, yes yeah That's what are you question yeah what are your reasons for not uh-huh. oh gee do you I feel so grateful I'm so lucky that you young person want to have sex with because I'm such an old bag you know like I didn't I didn't I didn't go into it with gratitude but I was still flattered I was still flattered and because because he he seemed a really bright in really intelligent person so we had a we had a nice rapport and um it was a few days I think of talking and whatever and I agreed to meet up with him and we met up and and it was nice it was nice and whatever the second date terribly he he behaved badly and at the end of the day I went well that was that's that then you know like left him bewildered in my wake because he was like it was like two different people and I remember walking away from the situation going wow I really knowing and feeling I think I might have given him a second chance if I was 18 or 35 Mm, but mm -hmm. but but I'm like you don't treat me like that you don't treat not just women like that as well, but me specifically like that. Like, who the fuck do you think you are? So somewhere along the line, in all the life experience that I'd had, somewhere along the line, I did become an ally to myself rather than thinking of how can I make myself the right person for other people to want me. Thank you for uh, saying these things. Yeah, so I felt I felt really empowered. And so I found my interactions with people were, for the most part, I'd select people that were kind. And, and you may have experienced this too with a lot of younger men. You know, they expect, you know, they have like the cougar or the MILF um, perception or stereotype or, you know, however she presents uh, in porn. And, you know, 
in, they get to me and they're expecting me to freaking hang from the ceiling and do this, that, and the other, and this way and that way, and up on my, you know, it's just like, no, like, we're, what? Yeah. what? No. Yeah. And then, then I, you know, then I, I feel like I'm like a bad cougar, but I'm like, no, like, I, I can't live up to no, that. No, yeah. You, you, being realistic is, you know, you got to do it. You got to do it. And, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, I have to school. A school yeah. guy to that. You know, it. um, it's only once or twice that things went down in a way as as such that um, I thought I'm not going. I'm. I don't think I'm going to get that person to adapt to me. Right. So, and I didn't want to adapt to them. And I would actually yeah. say the way you do things, the things you're into. Um, I'm that's, you know, no, I have no interest. I have absolutely no interest in that. Um, and they would be like, I can do other things. I'm like, you know, well, because we did that, I'm already put off doing anything yeah. with you yeah. specifically anymore because, and when I say that, all I mean is the kind of position that they wanted me to get into, even if it was, if it was on top of whatever, but just this whole wanting to just jack ra- have jackrabbit fucking sex. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I just, I don't, I, it's not worth my time to try and, Mm-mm. and I'm not that into you or connected to you to, you know, like, try. yeah, yeah, <laughs> you yeah, too hard. Oh, yeah but, but lovely, you're, a, you're lovely guys. I've got nothing against you. You're a decent yeah. human being, you're a sweetheart and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. But, but I want you to learn in your own time with someone else and that's not my responsibility or my job or, and I'm not interested. But, uh, yeah, but I'm looking at um, the – I find it interesting talking to Phoebe too because she grew up in a strict upbringing. And I find it interesting when – because I wasn't born – I wasn't raised with religion or strictness. I had older sisters and their friends and stuff, and I saw them going out and having sex with boys and all that sort of stuff. So that's – that's the example that I had. I was always curious. I didn't have um, a lot of shame, just just the great unknown. It was all the great unknown that I wish I knew more, but I, I don't think I would have done a lot of things too differently in regards to just being curious and wanting to have sex. I didn't have shame around it. Or That's any, wonderful. Or any irony or any irony around guys having this um, – hero status if they had a lot of sex and me not having the same hero status I immediately understood that this was wrong and I look back and I think just thank fuck for that I'm really grateful that this double standard was always something that occurred to me it was never I never felt devalued by the fact that I had sex the only time I felt devalued was when I was assaulted and that that is something where I know that that was a complete situation of a whole other a whole other thing it didn't. Yeah. It didn't. T- it didn't put me off sex. It, it triggered me in other ways, but didn't put me off s- sex because I knew that that had nothing to what what went on had nothing to do with sex and everything to do mm. with that that person that person right being whatever, um, and it had a lasting effect on me for sure. But that's a whole other subject. Um, but. In my 30s, I, that's when I started keeping score. I remembered who I'd had sex with before I got married and I decided when I started having sex regularly again, I'm like, actually, I want to keep track now. And when I started the podcast, I'm like, hey, cool, I've got this list and this is definitely something I can draw from to illustrate how times have changed and how we've gone backwards. I really think that sexual sexual empowerment for women has gone backwards in a lot of ways. Talk to me about that. <laughs> well, I'll get onto that. But um, <laughs> uh, I, I never journaled. I was never a journaler. I just wanted to have a record of experiences with people that led me to significant people in my life. I think that's what I was thinking of, you know, that, that when I would meet someone and partner up again, I'd have a record of the people I'd been with between my first partner and my next big romance whatever that was going to be if it was going to be I'd pretty much forgotten but I was also keeping score because I wanted to know if I was ever going to hit triple figures (laughs) I'd want to know but yeah it's like far out um each person is a story yeah absolutely and it's a a abject lesson for me not to repeat something or for me to notice 
where I made a, a good decision and all that sort of stuff. So it was like, I think, a bit of a protective mechanism of me wanting to document these people in my life. Yeah, so I'm glad, I'm glad I've got it. But I, I, I wanted to be able to um, draw on it so that I could, for instance, look at look at it and just to remind myself that when I look at it most for the most part I'm looking at names of people that I liked Mm -hmm. that's a great way of saying it and when I look at the list from other times I'm like people people I liked and also people I didn't know people I knew their nickname but I didn't know their name <laughs> so big difference, big difference. Um, but I just wanted to relate that this is one person that I that I connected with, and I never had a crush on him. Um, but I liked him a lot, and we had fun together. We got together. I think it was three or four times over a two month period, and we met. We had dinner, and we went for a walk. And during our walk, I grabbed him by the hand and pulled him into a, a, a little alcove in a shop and kissed him and stuff. I knew that we were facilitating a fantasy of his and I was okay with that because I just thought he was a lovely person. Yeah. I just thought everything about him was lovely and I connected with him as a, he's a nice guy and... I'm okay with being a fantasy to this nice guy because I feel like he sees me as a person, not just as a, a body to have sex with. Like I, I got that much from him. Mm-hmm. So the couple of times that we did have sex, I would be like, do you want me to get dressed up? Like I'd actually ask him, do you want me to get dressed up? Because I was like, he's a nice, decent, sweet, human, kind person. And I just, I was okay with that, us being that. And he was officially sort of the biggest age gap, I think, at the time. Mm-hmm. And um, and then he contacted me to tell me that he realised, being with me, he realised that he missed being in a relationship and he wanted to be in a relationship and he didn't want to hurt my feelings or anything, but he thought he should stop seeing me while he allowed himself to pursue going out with people is you know looking for someone to be in a relationship and I just pumped him up so much I'm like thank you like you didn't have to do that you're such a fucking gentleman yeah that's pretty awesome you cared about my feelings you thought you thought I you even entertained the thought that I would have feelings around it and I and I didn't had he just sort of either stopped contacting me with no explanation or gave me a brief explanation, I probably would have been okay with it, you know. Um, I just, I don't know, I just had a lot of trust around the fact that it was what it was and it wasn't anything that it wasn't. And I just wanted to impress this story. Anywhere I could put this in the podcast anyway, I thought, where am I going to get a chance to tell this story? And when I was... I thought when I talk to you, I I definitely want to tell this story because this generational thing and this porn thing, it may have miseducated people. It may have steered them down the wrong path in certain ways, but not all young men are gullible. When we're pursuing having sex with men, regardless of what age, we can ascertain, we can ascertain, we can devise some questions to ascertain whether or not they watch porn at all. And whether, mm-hmm. or not they're gonna, whether or not they're going to be influenced by it. And we don't have to go into situations where we're having sex that we know is going to be shit. Mm-hmm. If you're going to be a sexually empowered woman and look for people to have casual hookups with and not have any expectations, you still owe yourself to ascertain whether or not you're going to have good sex, not just whatever you get, but actually have good sex and Every single person I had sex with after the age of 50, I had orgasms. Can you say the same? No. You are inspiring me. Right. You are inspiring me to raise the bar. The reason for that, even with the guys that I thought weren't particularly good at sex, I, I would still get excited by being kissed and stuff. 
And if they wanted to have intercourse sooner than I wanted to have intercourse, I, I'd still sort of think, well, maybe that'll be good. You know, maybe, I don't know. I, I, I just sort of took it moment by moment. I didn't really judge it too much. But if after sex I hadn't had an orgasm, I would say I haven't had an orgasm and actually tell them wh what I would like to do to make that happen. Because I was also, I was always goal orientated. I didn't have sex with people just to have sex with people. I did have sex with people because I wanted to have orgasms with another person. I wanted to share my orgasms with another person. I thought having sex with other people was better than masturbating. And I saw these two things as an either or then. This is only a few years ago. I don't necessarily think about, I, like, the way I think has changed a lot in the last two or three years, but also the ageing process has hit me like a truck in the last two or three years. So whether these two things are the same, I'm not sure. But I felt it was my responsibility to me and my responsibility to other women as well to leave that person more aware of what could be, what sex could be, if they weren't already aware before, I would, in, I, I feel like I want to enlighten them that, you know, this is a gift here. This is, you know, this experience that you've had, go forth and multiply with it, you know, give it, pay it forward or, or whatever. I didn't put it in any words at all. I just really wanted, like, the conversation before sex was about, this is what I want. And they'd say, this is what I want to give you. So I follow that through. And That's I didn't. Great. I love that actually. And, and, I, and I think that I, I can do a better job in, in, you know, negotiating that, navigating that and, and having more direct conversations because I think I've just been kind of like, you know, I'm just going to get what I get. And, you know, yeah, just kind of putting, putting my expectations out there stronger, yeah. you know, like, cause yeah. Or even as the thing is, it's expectations is one thing, but what are your desires? Whereas I, I, okay, I could say, I could say I wanted an orgasm, but I didn't just want any old orgasm. I wanted the orgasm that I wanted, the type of orgasm that I wanted to have. Mm -hmm. I wanted to have this tremendous, ex you know, I wanted this person to be okay with the fact that I was going to have this experience and vocalize a lot and, you know, that it was going to be huge. Not this little quiet thing that I'm, you know, po quite polite orgasm that I'm having. Thank you very much for giving me an orgasm, kind sir. How much do I owe you? You know? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's not, yeah. So, so I can't tell you what your expectations are, but I'm interested in what you think they are or what you feel they are or what you know that, what you know they are in regards to having a preference for younger men to begin with. Like what's your, when, when did you, when did this sort of transition happen to you? Like dating people, obviously leaving your age open, like I, I did leave your age open, not really thinking too much about it and having a barrage of young men wanting to go out with you <laughs> and then going, okay, what do I do with this now? So what was, what was going through your mind when you first started being a cougar? Yeah, it was, I was 38, you know, I had always, uh, up until, well, up until three years ago, I, you know, I had, I, I don't know that I had any one night stands. Maybe I'd had one or two, maybe, mm. you know, up until the age of, let's say 47, um, you know, starting from 23 to 47, you know, I remember I had hookups in college. Um, and then I first had sex around 23, but it was, you know, kind of a series then of committed relationships. Um, at 38, I had been in a committed relationship for 10 years with a guy. And, um, I remember just starting to notice younger men mm. and I thought it was really strange. Like, I mean, it was kind of strange, kind of funny. I even joked with my girlfriend, like, Hey, look at those guys working at the Abercrombie store in the mall, you know, <laughs> like, really, and I've always been boy crazy. So I'm, I've always looked at guys from, I mean, kindergarten on, I can remember being boy crazy. And I just thought that was kind of strange, but I was in a committed relationship and didn't even really think about it until we, we broke up, uh, shortly thereafter. And, um, 
I had my first experience with a younger guy uh, when I was, I guess it was 39 and he was 28, 29. Mm -hmm. So it was Mm -hmm. a 10 year age difference. And I was like, ah, I mean, for me, so much of it is the physicality. I I Mm -hmm. don't, it's, um, and and so I identified when you said something about like feeling like feeling masculine or whatever, like Mm -hmm. I don't, there's this, it is so visceral in me Mm -hmm. when I see a guy that I'm attracted to or like Mm -hmm. just the physical apparatus. It is so, I am so physically attracted, Mm -hmm. um, in a moment, you know, Mm -hmm. to someone with, with, a certain look. And Mm -hmm. so I really connected with this guy with, with, with that. And then that was it. Um, I ended up in my forties in two relationships. One lasted, actually they both kind of lasted about four years each. One was with a guy who was maybe six years older than me. And the other was, he was 70 years old. Mm -hmm. So he was 25 years older than I was. Wow. And yeah, I know. And so I left that and then went right down into the twenties. I, um, had, I, when I was with the guy, actually even in my forties, I was still noticing younger guys and I was mm-hmm. joking about it and everything in my later forties. It really, I was like, wow, I was really, I would, I have a gay roommate and he mm-hmm. and I have been best friends for a number of years and we share a life together. I mean, he is like a husband to me in so many ways, a, a life partner. Mm-hmm. Um, we're very connected but it's just, you know, we don't have sex. Mm -hmm. So he's just like, you know, he's like, can you need to, I'm going to put you on the dating apps. I'm going to put you on Tinder. And I was like, I did not want my gay best friend, you know, putting my, my profile together on a dating app. So I finally did it myself. And I think at that time, I probably said it from maybe like 35, 30, 35 to 70. Mm -hmm. And then it just like started, I just, I, you know, as I was looking at different ages and profiles, I just wasn't finding anybody that I was attracted to except for the younger guys. And then mm. gradually it kept skewing younger and younger and younger. Mm. And, and so that was when I was about 47. And so for the last three years, it's been, except for one experience, they've all been between like 20 and 31 or so. Mm. And, uh, or I would say college and 20, uh, college and 31. And yeah. So, um, you know, and, and that's the other thing too, um, is if I, if I had a different life situation, if I did not have my best friend in my life and and we weren't sharing this life together and and having this type of very non-traditional relationship that we have, um, my needs I think would be a lot different. Yep. You know, I would be looking for a lot more meaning from my relationships because that is important to me. Yeah. Um, and you know, and I do like to have connection, and I have had that in relationships before. Um, but I think because you know I have so many things ticked off with him in terms of companionship and someone who cares about me and I care about him, and there's this mutuality and a shared life experience. Um, that. Um, yeah, it's just, it's just cause kind of like the sexual part just needs to be met. Mm. But I have to be honest, you know, there are sometimes I, 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 I would like to have more connection mm. in, in these encounters. You know, I do feel that sometimes, you know, just to be able to hold someone's hand and walk in the park with them, mm. you know, or, or to be able to go on a trip with someone. Yeah. And, and have that romantic, sweet, you know, mm. fun, sexy weekend, you know, those are great things to have too. So. Mm. It's, it's just kind of like where I am right now. So yeah, that, and so the younger guy thing, I think for me is a definitely a physical attraction, but it's also this notion that they have this energy of a lifetime of possibility ahead of them Mm. that I love. Mm. And I even, you know, at age 50, I really like to wake up every day with that same sense of possibility for myself Mm. that even though more than half of my life has been lived that I still have endless possibilities ahead of me, that Mm. I'm not just trapped into one path or one outcome for myself, that life can continue to keep unfolding for me in amazing ways in very meaningful ways. Yeah. So I also love that about younger guys. And the fact that throughout my life, I have had the tendency to caretake Mm. and to have, to be very codependent in terms of like being the emotional container of the relationship and holding things together, taking on too much responsibility. And yeah, I, you know, 
this this thing with younger guys, it's like, almost like it's a protection. It protects me from myself and going yeah. for these relationships where yeah. I'm, you know, and I can't, that's not necessarily healthy. I understand I, that. I definitely relate to that, yeah. But yeah. for me, for right now, as I continue to evolve and learn and grow myself and um, and get stronger and assert more mm-hmm. and find more worth in myself and... Um, flex all those those muscles of of true womanhood and <laughs> for now it, it it's okay for me yeah. um to to not be in situations where i am just taking too much on yeah and younger guys are independent and self sufficient they got their own lives and i don't i don't have to get involved you would hope me. yeah <laughs> Um, that's part of the reason why I don't do apps e- uh, anymore but and part of the reason why I was enjoying the adventure of having these trysts with people of all different cultural backgrounds and, and age and all that sort of stuff. But they veered towards younger because I was mostly mixing with younger people in other aspects of my life. And for me it was I was into pop culture and, and things that – and theatre and art and I wanted to remain current I wanted to know what is what people are into interested in and, and I never sort of looked down my nose at things and thought you kids don't know what humour is or whatever I was there like watch this show it's great and nine times out of ten they were right and I'd be like oh, I wish I had this kind of insightful um, black comedy and stuff when you know when I was growing up watch this cool stuff and and fun and sense of humor and and spontaneity like having the yeah. you know having the doing text texting and cybering and and all that sort of stuff enjoying that spontaneity and stuff and at the time i needed or thought i needed it was like an outlet i used to um be social drinker a fair bit and it was all tied up with me wanting to party and wanting to to just go out and just forget my problems. And I also thought young men were safe because I'm not going to want to have a relationship with someone that was more than 20 years younger than me. You know, I thought I thought it was safe, but that's that's me saying that I never got emotionally attached to any of these young men and that would be a lie. I got emotionally attached to a couple of them and we had in what I would call entanglements. I think Jada Pickett Pinkett Smith copped a lot of flack for referring to a, an extramarital relationship she had with someone as an entanglement. And everyone <laughs> and everyone came down and I go, call it what it was. It was a relationship. It was this that and thing. And I thought because we were never officially going out in a relationship and we didn't mix with each other's friends, we, we weren't dating. We were just seeing each other and talking to each other every day, several times a day, and having a very close resemblance to an actual relationship. But it couldn't be one because they were that young and realising that I was becoming to rely on that interaction and, and wanting to have them in my life more often and stuff. Still didn't want to waltz off to the altar with anybody that was a lot younger than me, but I still wanted more from them than I, I probably should have wanted. Um, and then realizing after a while I got to rein this in and actually up my age limit. And I did that for a while. And then I thought, but then I'm just meeting older guys who don't really get it either. So that's uh, after a while, I've just pulled right back to complete celibacy. And the bar is so high. I don't even, I can't even see it. (laughs) It's like, it's not there. I don't think about it. So, and it's, it's, I'm not interested, literally not interested slash too scared to venture back into the dating game now I'm just like uh, I'm, I'm too battle weary from it and just just and just doing it for sex is pointless you know like literally pointless now but it was fun while it lasted and yeah I, I see myself getting to the same place at some point yeah I, I, I really I really do I, mm. I know that you know I'm just doing this because this is where I am now yeah I have actually, if I could ask you a question, um, because I, I feel like, um, so much of what I talk about and how I talk about it is so heteronormative. Yeah. It's just so much about an older woman and a younger guy. 
and mm. split in the gender. And that's so much, I mean, because that's my experience. But I'm also really curious about like these, this age gap thing um, in other um, ethnicities, in other cultures, um, and with other gender identifications. Mm. Like in, in, in your experimentation and in your history, were there experiences that you had with much younger women? Mm, if you yeah. don't mind me asking. Yes, there were. Okay. Yeah. And again, this wasn't something that I pursued necessarily. It was just friendships that became um, uh, flirty and stuff. So, uh, again, because I just had I, – I was around people. And when you're involved in, like, theatre, you have a variety of different people, lots of LGBTQ, obviously, but you also have swingers, poly people, um, and, you know, everything in between. And so there's no judgment. There's not a lot of judgment. And uh, I started it when I was 40. I was thinking, how long has this been going on for? I've missed this all my life, this, this opening myself up to not just – different parts of me, but meeting people who were different and diverse. And, yeah, so it's just the best thing that I ever did was was uh, own and pursue my creative life. And it's, a, it's weird. Like, this is where we get into the whole MILF and Cougar handle and the double standard thing and how it manifested in, in – my internalized either internalized misogyny or internalized patriarchy even and my internalized sort of double standard or whatever I know that when I was a child when I was a, a young teenager and stuff I had mad crushes on my sister's friends and you know and they were all older than me and um, pop stars and stuff that were you know grown men not necessarily young people. And the first guys that I had a lot of sex with and stuff, like my first relationship with someone was only a couple of years older than me. But all of the guys that I was with before I got married were between, uh, you know, um, five and ten years older than me. And I was like 17, 18. Mm -hmm. so I actively pursued that now I know that in conversations with men of that age now 25 27 they look at girls that are like 17 18 and they second guess themselves they these days there's more awareness and they they think they think of that as an age gap mm -hmm. and there was this sort of common whether it was a myth or an old wives tale or whatever there was this idea that girls evolved emotionally younger than men did. So again, this is this is a very heteronormative, very patriarchal sort of idea of what it is to be masculine and what it is to be feminine. And girls are emotional and boys aren't. So it was just a a, a truism or something that just sort of infiltrated into like girls are just interested in emotions it doesn't they weren't more emotional they were just more interested and given more mm. and and we were given more permission to want that we were told to want that we were told to want romance we were told to aspire to these things boys the messages they would get they weren't actually actively told but the messages they would get they would get from media and stuff like that is that they were to uh, look for a woman as a prize, whether as someone to be in a relationship with or just as a conquest. So these two things, one made the man the stronger person and one made the girl the weaker person. So this paradigm, and I'm still processing it as I talk to you. I'm still processing it because I, I've these are concepts and thoughts I wanted to talk to you about specifically because you're – a cougar and that's your part of your um shtick and and that's part of it and I know that when younger guys were attracted to me I attributed their ability to of discernment about the age gap more comfortably than I did with younger women that would flirt with me I felt it a little bit inappropriate at first like because it surprised the fucking hell out of me I didn't understand I didn't understand or expect that younger women would necessarily be attracted to an older woman and not just an older woman but a much older woman 
So I hadn't factored it. I hadn't factored it in at all. And I didn't date a lot of women. I mostly dated men, and it was partly men are easier. And I, I if I was after a quick fix or something, men men were easier. And partly because I was intimidated by the emotional component that I expected there there would be in that interaction and intimidated by protective instinct that I had over a young woman because I would see myself in that young woman. Yeah. So there was a lot of interesting things going. But, like, one night I went out with a, a young friend of mine. We were going out to go to gay clubs, um, queer clubs, because we were both venturing out into this world not having not having much experience, both of us. And I was so excited to, to go out with a girl, to go out to be in a queer club with a girl. It was the first time that I'd done that. But it wasn't a date. It was two friends, two friends going out. And she was, like I say, she was younger than me. But the moment we crossed the threshold of the first club, she held my hand. Really? Yeah. And when we started drinking and whatever and sat down, she sat on my lap. And when we danced, she got physical with me. And it wasn't me initiating any of it. But I was up for it. I was like, this is fun. This is great. I was really – but but I was also completely and utterly bamboozled by it. I just didn't really – but I – in my – because we were friends, because I understood her as a person and an intellect, had an intellectual understanding of who she was, I just figured she was just a fully empowered person person knowing what she wanted and whatever and trying not to overthink it trying not to judge that it was inappropriate just because she was a female of a certain age when I would not think about a male of a certain age a a boy of a certain age or a girl of a certain age woman you know we're talking about uh, at that time I think she was 20 and I'm like 53 Mm-hmm. So, you know, and so I ask you, when you imagine that in your head, what does that do to your thought processes? Do you think you've been, you've had sex with guys who are 20 and here I am telling you that I hooked up with, we didn't have sex, but we hooked up on the dance floor with someone that age. Does that strike you as being in any way inappropriate because she's a woman? You know, it's so I think, it's, so I guess two things come to, a few things just kind of percolate. Um, the, the one thing I would say is, um, you know, because I see this on a lot of my TikTok comments, a lot of people want to make the age gap thing, right. And right or wrong, just Mm. black or white. And I would say, you know, there are some 20 year olds, 19 year olds, 20 year olds that would be very inappropriate for me to have sex with and Mm. would not be the right situation because Mm. of the emotional maturity or just, you know, I could, I, there's just a sense sometimes that I get that no, like this, this just isn't it. Mm. So in that case, yeah, inappropriate Mm. other cases, you know, these guys like uh, is, I don't feel like, you know, no harm, no foul. Mm. So when I think about the situation you're presenting, like I totally can understand, Mm. you know, your, um, your under your your consideration of her and her age because you've been there and and because you are a woman yourself and and you have the context of that and the dynamic and so I would say kind of the same thing though too like I guess it would just depend it depends mm. on the individual I don't mm. think it's necessarily about the age yeah um but it does it it really brings up a fascinating point that I come up against almost every day about like, you know, how is it that so many more young women are harmed in these age gap relationships, or at least that's my perception that yeah. over time that so many more, more younger women have been compromised, manipulated, abused, mm. um, whatever the dynamic is that happens in the age gap with a younger woman and let's say an older man, Mm. Um, versus like, you know, like a 20 year old who's with a 50 year old woman and, you know, he just has sex with her and he goes on with his life and there's no harm. No, like I said, no harm, no foul. It doesn't seem like there's any harm. And so, but why is that? Mm. Why is it different? I ask that every day. I think, I think 
when I when I dig deep into this stuff in the atmosphere of the sex positive movement. Okay, so this is another this is another wave of feminism, but it's at odds with itself in certain ways as well, because we want everybody to look after everybody else and everybody to know themselves and everybody to understand what emotional maturity is or not or whatever. There's just a lot of factors that we don't know. Like I could say that I ascertained that this young person was emotionally mature and could make her own decision. And But I also look back and think I was thrilled to pieces to be in a queer club kissing a girl on the dance floor. And that was that was the top of my idea of thank you heaven <laughs> like I was like it was it was me having an experience that I felt my life had been missing up until that point so I didn't dwell too much on the age I was too busy feeling happy and 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 um and flattered and and um joyful and and all of these things because I was realizing something but that's about me Patsy that's yeah. not about her that's right, entirely right. about me and that's not necessarily the best headspace to be in when you when you with someone if it's it's a, it's got to be about the experience of both people and we talked about it afterwards and it you know it was just a fun thing that happened and it was just it was a no nothing it was a nothing not anything to think about but I use it as an example because I don't have that many examples to draw from. I haven't had a lot of experiences with women. I Like I've been on a couple of dates and dated another younger woman who was in her mid-20s and I think I recognised my own codependent sort of tendencies. I think I recognised them in her and as as wonderful and bright and, and smart, I, I thought, I, I don't think we should pursue this because it's a relationship and I felt like I wasn't sure if I could be that person that she kind of needed. I wasn't sure I wasn't, you know, I just, I, I was deathly afraid of, her, of hurting her mm-hmm. accidentally in some yeah. way. Yeah, yeah. So I, I called a halt to it, and we barely we'd barely been seeing each other for a week, and she was really upset, like really upset that I called a halt to it after a couple of dates. So I I feel really bad about it. I feel really bad about it for a while that I'd hurt her feelings, but at the same time, I did the right thing because we it wouldn't have been right to get into a relationship with her at that particular point in time. I. 100% would have ended up hurting her. Or she might have ended up hurting me. It would have been intense. Whatever it was, it was going to be intense. And I, th- <laughs> and I, and I thought I, I, I was afraid. I was afraid, and, you know, like, oh, this could be something, you know, like so there was all these reasons that I was afraid. So I didn't want to let her down in any way and I didn't want to hurt her feelings. So, so I piked out. So I'm not going to over or underestimate her capacity for whatever would have happened in the relationship had we had one. I didn't know her well enough. That's yeah. the, and that's the other thing. How long does it take to get to know someone? <laughs> How long does it take to get to know ourselves and, and all this sort of stuff? So a lifetime. There's a lot of philosophy, but but the whole equivalency of what is and isn't creepy in people having casual sex with people of a certain age when all parties are consenting and whether that's older man, younger woman or younger man, older woman, we as a, we as a society have to learn to stop projecting at what happened to us in our lives or, or what are projecting onto that. And rather than put numbers on anything, accentuate the, you know, the sense of empowerment and self-esteem and self-worth that people have. Would you say your sense of self-worth is really, really high and you're a mature woman and, you you know, you're really, really emotionally strong and, and all that and you know so much more than you did at 20 and, like, how do you, how do you put yourself on that scale in emotional maturity and, and <laughs> like... <laughs> 
I, you know, I'm as vulnerable as the next person. And, well, and I just, yeah, no, I'm, I'm still so learning mm. and growing. I mean, yeah. always, yeah, always. And, um, yeah, I, and sometimes I feel like with, with self-esteem and self-worth and body positivity, I'm so behind. And I mean, it's I love to see this new movement, you know, I, on on Instagram and um, gosh, even in like an Athleta, I, you know, Athleta or Lululemon, like some of these yoga brands and showing all different body types and the gap, you know, that never that, that, that did not happen when I was growing up. It didn't even happen until a couple of years ago. And, yeah. and I just, it's just, it's really great to see that. I, I don't know in my lifetime if I will ever be able to fully love my body. I don't mm. know that I will ever be able to stand in front of a mirror and not pick to shreds. I really... You know, I've done battle with eating disorders over my lifetime, and it's so much better today at 50 than it was at, you know, 15 and 20 and 25 and 30, but I am not there. I'm not there. And how do you feel about yourself when you're with someone of 25 as opposed to being with someone who's 45? Like, it's, 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 do you feel the ego boost of, the age gap being part of the attraction to having the experience because it makes you feel good about yourself or better about yourself? I would say I don't know that that necessarily happens, but I'm definitely affected by male attention. Mm. Definitely. Mm. I definitely draw validation from that. You know, I'm very aware that I draw validation from that. Um, but I think, you know, whether the, you know, irrespective of age, you know, I, I think for me in that moment of having sex with a younger guy, it's just more like, wow, like I, I, I just, again, it's like that physicality and that, you know, because I usually, I tend to go for very athletic guys and who present a certain way mm-hmm. and, because, you know, and again, I, 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 this is where the dating apps aren't great because it is so physically based. And Mm. I know that if I were meeting people in real life, that my, my range of quote unquote type or what I would be attracted to, or, you know, having access to conversation and getting, being able to know someone's heart more would open up more opportunities for me. Yeah, absolutely. I know that, um, you know, this has trained me to be just so physically driven. Mm. And so, yeah, in that, in that moment, I think it's just more about like the physical thing. I, um, and, and, and just men in general validating, you Mm. know, Mm. that is still happening for me. And this is again, why I, sometimes I wake up, I'm like, I'm just such a horrible, like, like a horrible feminist. Like I really judge myself so harshly for that. Uh, like, yeah. Well, you got to remember that patriarchy made you that way. And I'm, I'm, I'm learning that. And we're going to leave it there because we do go off on a little bit of a different tangent in regards to feminism, but we do circle back to some of the themes already touched on in this part. The beauty of the conversation was we were both so enthusiastic and both so wrapped up in being really honest and sharing that we would start a thought and then go off on another thought But then we'd come back to it. So there's a bit of circling back throughout this conversation. We talked for like over three hours, all told. There was a certain amount of shorthand between us, both being women of a certain age, both having had the same sort of experiences. There was a lot of comfort level with this conversation. It felt like two old friends talking. It felt like we were sharing. And it also felt like what we were sharing was really valuable especially our vulnerability. I can't assert that strongly enough because I think a lot of projecting goes on when people look at other people's lives and other people's sex lives and and what they perceive they will be like when they reach a certain age. If they're still 20 years away from it, they might think, oh, when I'm 50, I'm going to be this, that and the other thing, not realizing that on the inside, there's fuck all difference. You change in a lot of ways in some ways and you don't change at all in other ways. I don't know another way to put it. 
It's just too hard to put into words, but suffice it to say, if you're 25 and thinking, oh, I'm so immature, I still feel like I'm 15, uh, you probably will find yourself saying that to yourself again at 35 and again at 45, again at 55. We're who we are. We come into the world with our personalities. I've given birth to three humans who are now grown men. And there's certain aspects to their personalities that was evident at birth. Little things like whether or not they took themselves too seriously, if they were a bit on the sensitive side, or if they were more inquisitive, or if they were a little bit more sensitive, if they were clingy even. And most babies are kind of clingy, but not always. Um yeah, just there's certain parts of who we are that kind of never changes. It's our essence. And what we become is usually shaped around our ideals and things that we've learned and our creative pursuits and what our relationships have done to change us for better or worse, how we recover from these things, how we thrive from other things. It's just a big fucking mixed bag. Um, Another thing I love about this conversation is it's got a bit of overlap with previous series that I've done on consent and also the Ixnay on the Inery Bay series, which was about sexuality. We're smack bang in the middle of Bisexuality Awareness Week. If you're on Instagram, I'm going to have a live with Ginny from My Disabled Sex Life, who I have talked to on the podcast. We've become really good friends, very supportive of each other in many ways. And I thought, fuck, who would be fun to celebrate with while Sydney's in lockdown. Who else but my beautiful friend Ginny from the UK? So I'm going to get dressed up and I'm going to make a bisexual playlist to pop onto Spotify and YouTube and all that sort of stuff to celebrate that. So that's what I'm going to enjoy doing for the rest of the weekend. The next bit of this conversation will probably come out next weekend. Listening to it back, it's emotionally taxing because I'm reliving things that I do still have a bit of mixed feelings about and I'm still kind of processing because between 2009 and 2012, I lost two friends and my marriage broke down. I always said from the outset that I would reveal things about myself and that's sometimes not easy. (laughs) So when I clock off from this and post it, I'm going to get into buy party girl mode and um, psych myself into catching up with Ginny on Monday night, Sydney time, Monday morning UK time, Sparrow Fart or middle of the night in America on September 20, I'm talking about. Bi Visibility Day is September 23. I send all my love out to my bi family far and wide. Thank you again for listening. Uh, Don't forget, I am on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash the eloquent in the room. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share the podcast and my social stuff. And also don't forget that I am affiliated with Nikki Darling, purveyor of fine sexual health and pleasure items. Use my link, which will always be in the show notes. Use my link. Use the code word eloquent for 5% off. They actually sent me a new product, which I'm looking forward to trying out and posting a review about. In fact, fuck it. I might just go and do that now. Talk to you soon. Two toys, two boobs. Winning!